Hello everyone, this is Connor, also known as Warnock, and welcome to another session breakdown video, this time for my track Four Corners. So before we begin, it would mean a lot if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, maybe to, maybe give this video a thumbs up, or follow me on Spotify or any form of social media. Okay, let's listen to a tiny bit of this track. If you haven't heard the track it's up on all forms of stream streaming platforms now so give it a blast okay let's start from the very very top where it has uh, the percussion element which is brought in from the start and loops for loops out towards most of the song so originally i actually had this midi pattern um, set up for acoustic drums and then I ended up picking up this plugin called Ting I believe it's from a Swedish company I'm not too sure um, and then I ran the MIDI pattern through this plugin and it turned out it created this kind of cool percussive unique beat so I ended up scrapping the acoustic drums and using this instead and then I just had the acoustic drums come in at the end of the song so basically this plugin uh, or sound sample library uh, takes random element of uh, random percussive um household objects like car keys silverware uh toy drum and then you can basically create your own beat out of it and it turned out really really well uh, on top of that i have an echo boy just giving a bit more reverb to the track i suppose and opening it up a small bit uh, which sounds really really cool the next thing we have here are drums which it comes in at the outro so for the drums, as always, I use Get Good Drums, uh, the, the Matt Halpern signature drum pack, which sounds fantastic. Uh, I'll just solo that on its own for a moment. And then for this track that says drum outro um it's slightly different I, I basically put just an echo boy uh stereo cannon preset on this so every time the snare gets hit you can hear this kind of cool whoosh noise i thought that it worked really, really well for the outro section, so that's why uh, I separated the tracks and processed them a bit differently. Okay, the next track we have are these, these are basically cymbal hits, and I use the BBC Symphony Orchestra by Spitfire, which is completely free. And yeah, like I said, I just use it for cymbal hits. So if you listen to the track without the cymbal hit, um, I feel like it doesn't bring in the next section uh, so smoothly. It just, I feel like that just that simple cymbal hit um, creates a nice contrast between the previous section. So I'll play it without the cymbal hit. And then I'll play it now with the cymbal hit put back in. So as you can see, or as you can hear, the transition seems a bit smoother, kind of uh, just works. It kind of just lures in the next section, in my opinion. So the next thing we have are, is called Piano One. So this is basically basically a trickily piano that I use. Um, I'll press play there for a moment so you can hear it on its own. And I use the Oliver Arnold's uh, Stratus plugin or sound sample library from uh, Spitfire Audio. Um, I love that that sound. It just sounds really, 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 really nice. And then the next one is the same sample library again, a different preset. Uh, I'm pretty sure this sample is a uh, is a takeoff of the Juno 60 synthesizer.
So yeah, it's just following the exact same thing as the piano uh, track. Moving down, we have the bass. I'll just play the outro part of the bass. So an interesting thing, particularly for this section of where the bass is playing, I like to edit my bass uh, pretty strictly to the kicks of the drums. So when I play the drums and the bass at the same time, you can hear that they're really, really tight and work well together. I don't do that all the time, but I felt like it, it was needed for this section. So um, it kind of just made everything sound really, really tight with the kick drum and the bass working together. Um, so an interesting story about my bass guitar, I have an Ernie Ball Music Man, basically a knockoff, so I basically built my own um, Ernie Ball bass and just got all the, the different parts, like I got the neck, the um, the body, and then in, in terms of pickups, I found some random fella off eBay who did these kind of cool humbucker pickups for Ernie Ball type basses, so um, I picked uh, a set of pickups off him. And I put the bass together myself and that's what I use for all my recordings. Okay, next thing we have is guitar. This part here is not very interesting. Uh, it's just, uh, it's there to create a transitional point. And I use the archetype plugin by Neural DSP, which sounds fantastic. I'll also solo this nice li little guitar part that comes in. Then I'll play that in context with the mix. Okay, let's move down a small bit. I'll skip the, the sax and the violin part and leave that till the end because that's the that's basically the main part of the song. There's actually some vocals in this track and it's me just singing like ooze so i'll solo them for a moment so you, so you can hear them since i'm not the best singer i used a bit of melodyne just to tune my vocals um a small bit and then a bit of the Echo Boy plugin just to kind of make it sound a bit more ambient. Okay, let's look at the violin track. I really, really like that percussive element that starts there. Um, I feel like it just really draws you into the start of the song. So an interesting story behind the violin and sax. Um, I hired uh, musicians of Fiverr.com to do this for me, which is really, really cool. So I found this Hungarian fiddle player um, who likes to mess around with effects pedals. And then I also found this incredible Brazilian saxophone player. It, uh, both of them did a great job. So in terms of giving the guys uh, a bit of sheet music, I kind of just gave them gave them free range like I gave them a rough um, section to work off but then they just did their own thing so both tracks um, both musicians played the, through the entire track and then I started to chop up um, different sections and mute different sections as you can see here in the sax there's a load of sections grayed out because I wanted the violin to showcase itself uh, so I wanted the sax and the violin to kind of interweave uh, between one another which worked out really really well Originally, originally the song was just going to be strictly saxophone, but I felt it was a bit too, I don't know, a bit too sexy or a bit too sensual. Uh, so when I brought in the 
fiddle player. Um, it kind of broke things up a small bit, uh, which sounded really, really cool. And then there's like all these kind of little small elements that add to the track, like this thing called Screech, which I'll play now. Uh, which I really, really like. So I'll solo the saxophone now. I'll solo actually the outro part of the sax where it's basically uh, the guy does his own solo. <laughs> As you can see here, I actually have a bit, a bit of Melodyne on this sax because I felt like the pitch was just a teensy bit off for the outro section. There's nothing on the um, the kind of verse parts, but for the outro, I just wanted to sound really, really tight and really, really in tune. And I also put a bit of compression and then again, Echo Boy. I just litter Echo Boy basically throughout this entire track. Um, but yeah, that's... That's more or less everything. Um, as I mentioned before in the session breakdown video for Signs, I don't like to use a large track count because, like I said before, less is more. Um, if I feel like everything works within with one another, I'm not going to overdo it at all. Um, and also, since I'm using MIDI drums because my recording studio can't, uh, I can't record real drums here because I live in a housing estate and I don't want to annoy all my neighbors. Uh, I feel like the MIDI drums work really, really well. Um, yeah, that's basically everything. I hope you enjoyed the session breakdown.